obviously in this lockdown, uh, lockdown season, uh, home assembly is slightly different. Um, you may be mildly relieved to discover that we're not going to be processing around the outside of the church, uh, given the fact that it was uh, torrential a bit earlier on. Um, but, um, you know, uh, unfortunately we're not able to walk around the inside either. But, so, um, you know, please enter into um, uh, the spirit of Palm Sunday as we gather to begin our celebration of our Lord's Passion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The offense in Christ, do you remember we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection? Today we come together to begin this holy celebration in union with the Church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our Saviour, to suffer, to die and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love, so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. If you'd like to hold your palm crosses in your right hand. Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die. Let these palms be for us signs of his, vic of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Standing for the Gospel of the Lord. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a tie there a coat that has never been written. Untie it and bring it back. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead, and those who followed, were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem, and went into the temple. And when he had looked around everything, as if it was, was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the Lord. So the uh, Eucharist continues with the comic for today. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race, sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death on the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility, and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. I invite you to sit down for our reading from the letter to the Philippians. Reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name, so that in the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. 
Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We come to our Passion Gospel. It is, uh, it is very long, so uh, uh, if I can invite you to stand if you're, um, uh, if you're able. If you, if you don't wish to stand for the whole of the uh, uh, Passion Gospel, uh, you don't have to. But uh, uh, those of you who are able would like to stand. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of the unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival, for there may be a riot among us. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why, why was the ointment wasted in this form? This ointment could have been sold for more than three hundred denarii, and the money didn't give it all. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for you, for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me in. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he, begin, so he began to look for the opportunity to betray him. On the first day of the unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go? And make preparations for you to eat our Passover. So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house. The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one after another, Surely the Lord is not time. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though we all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, 
Truly, I tell you, this day and this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep away from me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this help from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. And said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep away one hour? Keep away and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough, the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one that I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away in the dark. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, <laughs> Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. <coughs> a certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest. And all the chief priests, the elders, the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none. For many gave false testimony against him. And their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple to pay the hands, and in three days I have another, not to pay hands. But even at this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him and blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guard also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he, but he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you were talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed, 
And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is wonderful. But again, he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are wonderful. You are wonderful. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you were talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. <clears throat> then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered them, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone to whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release you, the king of the Jews? For he realised that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, hey, King, King of the Jews. Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to be crucified. They compelled the passerby, who was coming in from the country, to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, crucified him, and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and down on the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him, among themselves, and saying, He saved us, he cannot save himself, let him aside the king of Israel, come down on the cross now, so that we can see him. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is the Lord of God. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry, 
and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. Now when the centurion, who stood facing them, saw that in this way he breathed his last and said, Truly, this man was God's son. There was also women looking on from a distance, among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph and Solomon. Solom. These used to follow him and provide him when he was in Galilee. And there there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoned the centurion to ask him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and said, laid it in the tomb that had been hewn out of rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. This is the passion of the Lord. And so I invite you to sit or kneel on our intercessions. We share with Christ in his service. For forgiveness for the many times we have denied Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of heavens. For grace to seek out those habits of sin which mean spiritual death, and by prayer and self-discipline to overcome them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of heavens. For Christian people, that through the suffering of disunity, there may grow a reunion in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of heavens. For those who make laws, interpret them and administer them, that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of heavens. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of heavens. For those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of heavens. For those in the darkness and the agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of For those who, weighed down with hardship, failure, or sorrow, feel that God is far from them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of heavens. That we, with all who have died in pain, may find mercy in the day of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy. Christ is our peace, he has reconciled us to God in one body on the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. Time never that I pray the Morgan of people answer. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So we offer one another a socially distant sign.
Jesus, true and living, true vine and bread of life, ever giving yourself that the world might live. Let us share your death and passion. Make us perfect in your love. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, who, bearing our human likeness, humbled himself and in obedience accepted death, even death on the cross. He was lifted up from the earth that he might draw all people to himself. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and we and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praise of you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of paradise, heaven and earth are full of your glory, who is our in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, who is our in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise and grant that, by the power of the Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us, his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave him thanks, and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave him thanks. He gave it to him, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, the bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the Lord, give us your peace.
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his son. Lord, I am not ready to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. As we come now to receive communion here in church, I remind, um, uh, remind you to uh, uh, wait until you are uh, called, starting from the, uh, uh, the people in the south aisle, and, um, and to maintain social distancing as we move around the church. If you're joining us online, Please join with us in an act of spiritual communion at this point.
So there is a Eucharist tomorrow at 2 o'clock. It's, it's a Mother's Union Eucharist, but uh, um, please, uh, please don't feel inhibited by that. And uh, please do come along if you're able, 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Uh, on Thursday, uh, the usual uh, Eucharist uh, 11 in the morning, and then the Eucharist of the Lord's Supper at 7 o'clock in the evening. On Good Friday itself, there will be uh, just one hour uh, at 2 o'clock, so that's the liturgy of the day. And um, so those of you who've been to the three-hour devotional service will recognise that as the final hour at the cross. On Easter Eve, on Holy Saturday, at 8 o'clock in the evening, uh, there is the Easter Vigil. We'll light the new uh, Paschal candle for this year. Uh, and then on Easter Day, there is a uh, Eucharist at 8 o'clock in the morning, at half past 9 and at 11. Um, so please do come along to any of those services. In addition to that, every evening this week, the uh, Mission Area um, has organised a meditation on St. Mark's Passion, uh, the story that we've just, um, that we've just heard presented to us as the Passion Gospel. Uh, again, that's on Facebook, actually. We have access to Facebook, and that will be at 7 o'clock um, uh, every evening. Um, also, the, uh, the usual evening prayers on Monday and Wednesday only um, this week. Um, so, uh, so it's quite a you know, quite a full week. Um, but um, it is so wonderful to be able to celebrate um, Palm Sunday once again uh, with our congregation. I'm really sorry that we're not able to uh, walk outside or even around the inside of the church. Uh, and those of you who have withdrawal symptoms from all glory and all to honour, I'm afraid that uh, I will have to um, uh, listen to it at home or wait till next year. Uh, probably forgotten how it goes by the time we actually sing it again. I'm sure it will, I'm sure it will come flooding back once we can start that again. Um, anything, um, I don't know if there's anything else that I need to be announcing. Uh, are there any birthdays or anything like that coming up this week? Wedding anniversaries? Sorry, somebody over there? Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Jill. Jill. Congratulations, wedding anniversary. Yeah. Sorry, sit behind the pillow. <laughs>